Good day, it's your boy Peter Imoje, and today we're going to be talking about the use of opioids for pain control. Opioids are a group of medications that have suffered addiction for so many years now, leading to different countries of the world coming up with very strict laws towards the control of these medications. Some countries, however, still suffer from weak laws, and many countries of the world till this present day still suffer from illegal sales of these medications. It's also a group of medications that um, many people get addicted to and use without doctor's prescription, which is the abuse we talk about today. So without wasting much time, we're going to go over the examples of different kinds of opioids, some of which we already know. And they include codeine, fentanyl, hydromorphone, meperidine, methadone, morphine, oxycodone, which contains acetaminophen, um, propoxyphen, sulfentanil, buprenorphine, and pentazosin. There are so many other examples of opioid medications. The practical tips towards the use of opioid medications, um, usually for opioid naive patients, it's important to use opioids as alternatives if possible. If opioids are required for acute pain, please give the minimum effective dose for just a few days. For acute pain such as broken bones or minor surgery, three to seven days of analgesia is usually sufficient. For major surgery, one to two weeks of opioid medications may be required. Consult the pain management team and use a multimodal approach. If you're going to be starting your patient on opioids for chronic non-cancer pain, a good resource are your local guidelines. If the patient appears to require opioid doses greater than 50 oral morphine equivalents, a good consultation with the acute pain team is recommended. Reassess opioid pain patients often at least weekly. For opioid dependent patients, please note, often from these patients who are asking for larger doses, seeking early refills, um, actually exhibit behavior suggestive of misuse. Be aware. Do not discharge them from practice. Consult an opioid dependency expert for advice on prescribing drugs such as combination of buprenorphine, naloxone, or methadone and naloxone. Opioid dosing considerations to take note of. For chronic pain, opioids should be prescribed on both and around the clock, that is four hours, short-acting morphine, hydromorphone, and oxycodone, and one hour PRN basis for breakthrough pain. The breakthrough opioid dosage is approximately 10% of the 24-hour dosage, reassess often, at least weekly. Seeking to titrate doses down or de-prescribe. However, if the patient is opioid naive or very sensitive, for example, an elderly patient, to the side effects of opioids, the dose should be lowered and interval of administration increased. This is to let the patient get used to the opioid in the first few days. Long-acting opioid preparation should not be used for acute pain. Short-acting immediate release formulations are much better to achieve a quick response and to allow for rapid titration. Hence, when the existing cancer pain has destabilized or in the presence of acute cancer pain, short-acting formulations are superior. As a rule of thumb, the use of three or more breakthrough doses in a day would warrant a dose increase in the regular opioid being administered. Adjustments of the regular dosing can be done every 24 to 48 hours. Usually, the breakthrough doses would be added to the regular dosage and the new regular daily dosing recalculated on a 24 hours basis in divided doses. For example, if a patient on a regular dosing of 10 mg of oral morphine every 4 hours requests an additional 30 mg of oral morphine for breakthrough pain over the last 24 hours, his new regular dose will be 60 mg plus the 30 mg which will give a total of 90 mg in divided doses. That is 15 mg per oral every 4 hours. Similarly, absence of breakthrough doses may suggest a need to decrease the regular dose. 
There is no theoretical ceiling dose for opioids. The maximum dose is limited by the side effect profile for individual patients. Current opioid prescribing guidelines recommend careful consideration for doses above 50 morphine equivalents daily. Now the route of administration. Only codeine, morphine, and hydromorphone are readily available in both oral and parenteral formulation. For comfort and convenience, the preferred route for parenteral opioid administration is subcutaneous. Fentanyl is only available in the parenteral and the transdermal preparation. Methadone and oxycodone are available in oral formulations but must be specially compounded for parenteral use. If the oral route is not suitable, consider the subcutaneous, intermittent or continuous, or intravenous and less commonly rectal routes. Generally, the intramuscular route is not recommended because of the pain associated with repeated injections. Consider transdermal fentanyl if the patient has successfully achieved stable pain control. Sublingual fentanyl or solfentanil may be considered for patients who need a fast-acting medication for incident pain. The dose of parenteral opioids is usually 50% of the oral dose. A common mistake is morphine X milligram per oral or subcutaneous or intramuscular or intravenous. Management of adverse effect. The hand that prescribes the opioid must also prescribe the laxative. Constipation occurs in the majority of patients and generally will persist for as long as the opioid is being used. For opioid naive patients, consider having metoclopramide coverage to deal with opioid induced nausea, which can be severe but generally resolves within a week. Avoid meperidine due to high risk of neurotoxicity with repeated dosing due to toxic metabolite and anticholinergic properties thereby leading to confusion or even seizure. It's very important to note this. The common dosage of opioids. Well, some of the opioids can be mentioned here. Codeine, 30 to 60 mg per oral, 4 hourly. Hydromorphone, 1 to 2 mg per oral, 4 hourly. And hydromorphone, 0 0.5 to 1 mg per oral, every 1 hour, PRN. Hydromorphone tablet strength include 1 mg, 2 mg, 4 mg, and 8 mg. Morphine, 5 mg per oral, 4 hourly, and morphine, 2.5 to 5 mg per oral, every 1 hour, PRN. Oxycodone, 5 mg per oral, 4 hourly, and oxycodone, 2.5 mg per oral, every hour, PRN. Fentanyl patch, 25 to 75 micrograms per hour, every three days. The adverse effect and contraindications. Um, the common side effects of opioids are sedation and nausea, which tend to resolve within a week. Another common side effect is constipation, which tends to continue for the duration of less common side effects, opioid neurotoxicity, which include drowsiness, respiratory depression, agitation, vivid dreams, tactile and visual hallucinations, myoclonus, and hyperalgesia. These problems are more commonly seen in patients with pre-existing cognitive failure, renal failure, infections, and those on inappropriately high doses of opioids for prolonged periods of time. Genital urinary effects, retention of urine, which is infrequent, and uh, the effects on the skin may include itching due to histamine release. On the next podcast, we're going to be talking about the mechanism of action and indications of opioids. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry for taking so much time and see you next time.